Hi everyone and welcome to this little video on writing better papers, common mistakes, and I'm just going to highlight what are some of the common mistakes that uh, I see in papers so that students can see these and hopefully in their drafts edit these things out or clean these up so that you can attain a better grade um, and also better understand and appreciate writing as a whole. The first thing is avoid first person pronouns. The I, the me, the my, the we, us, our, uh, you don't want to use those. And some of the reasons you don't want to use those is of course you want to keep your focus on the content. What is it that you're talking about? That's where your attention should be. Uh, the paper is not exactly about you. It's not about you. It's typically about something that you're trying to explore. So whenever you bring I into it, you're really distracting from the focus and from the content. Now, certainly for some people, or, or in certain conditions, this rule can be broken. I wouldn't even say it's a rule, it's, it's often something strongly encouraged, but the idea is that you know when to break it. Uh, and often when I see students' papers, they're doing it just because they're doing it. There's no real sound reason to bring yourself into what it is that you're writing. Instead, you should be focused on the content, not on yourself. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Of course, you know, people in, in a lot of these assignments will say, yeah, but it's my opinion, so I need to say that it's my opinion. Uh, and this is something that's probably been drilled into you in, in school over the years and things like that. Uh, but you can include your opinion without including first-person references. In fact, what I often recommend students is that in your rough draft, by all means, include your first-person references. You know, I think this and I believe that. But in the submitted draft, that is, it should be the edited draft, you want to remove it. And the reason you want to remove it is that if you're throwing out your opinion in an academic paper, your opinion has no value unless you can articulate how and why you've come to that opinion. And you come to how and why by citing evidence, by referring to specific things within the content or with whatever it is you're exploring, by building an argument. And once you've built that argument, there's no need for you to include I, me, my, etc because the, it's now an argument and it stands on its own. So remember in academic papers when you're asked for your opinion it's not just you can you know you can think whatever you want that's not what academic writing is. Academic writing is you think a certain way based upon certain facts and once you identify those facts and create that argument you don't have to say I believe this or I think this or I feel this. So if you ground your opinion in specific elements, you don't need I because you've made an argument. Also avoid second person pronouns. This is you, you your. Um, you just don't do that. And the reason you don't is whenever you use second person, you're often referring to the reader. And by using second person, you're relying on your relationship with the reader. You're saying you, right? The, and it, the implied is that you, the person reading this, um, and you don't want to do that. Again, in academic writing, you want to be able to make your argument stand on its own. So you shouldn't have second person pronouns. You also want to avoid contractions. Uh, just pretend that you can't do it. Uh, again, this is, a, this is one of those flexible rules. Um, in these papers, again, I'd like to see you be able to follow the rules, be able to meet the rules and think about editing and how your paper sounds um, instead of just, just throwing them out because, well, I know the rule. So one also thing to know here about titles, because I see this happen a lot. Um, when do italicize, when do, when do you use quotation marks? You italicize when you're using book titles, film titles, journal titles, play titles, TV series titles, comic book series titles. When do you use quotation marks? When you're giving an article title. So the article should be in quotation marks. An essay should be in quote an essay title should be in quotation marks. A poem's title should be in quotation marks. Short story titles should be in quotation marks. In episodes or individual issue name uh, episodes of TV shows or individual uh, issues of comics should be in quotation marks. Another important thing that students often miss out here is to introduce your stuff. Um, whenever you're going to use something, you want to introduce it or spend some time with it. You don't just want to put it out there. So when you start off a paper, you want to have that introduction, and that introduction should clearly identify the focus of your paper. If you're doing an article analysis, you should be introducing the article, you should be identifying the author, and what the paper that the person is reading is about to see laid out. 
when you are introducing an author or anybody for that matter, the first time you introduce that person, you want to provide the full name. That is first and last name. Any time after that, you just refer to the person by the last name. The only exception to this would be, of course, if you have more than one person that you're writing about that has the same last name, such as you're describing a family. Then you might decide to use first names instead. Otherwise, you default to the last name. The full title of a work. So again, you might provide the full title of a work the first time you introduce it. The second time you're talking about it, you might just include everything before the colon or an abbreviated but clear reference to that work. And quotes. Uh, quotes are a big one. Students often don't introduce or work with quotes enough. So let's talk about introducing quotes. The first thing you have to remember is that quotes are not hand grenades. You do not just throw them into your paper and just hope to, you know, hope that it takes care of the problem. Uh, quotes need to be more delicately placed in, in genuinely considered as you put them into your paper. And one thing to remember is they don't replace your writing. In fact, if you're using quotes, it should actually lengthen your writing, writing your own writing. In other words, you're not just lengthening your paper when you use quotes, you're lengthening what you are writing. Because if you're doing this right, you're talking about the quote. Right? They need explaining. They need context. You can't just put in a quote and assume your reader knows what you're talking about. Often what I see is students will put in a quote and that's supposed to make some kind of connection to what was said before, what's coming after, but the, the student never actually makes those connections. If you're including quotes, you need to provide context. You need to explain why this quote in any way makes sense. And if you're using a very complicated quote, you definitely need to explain what the quote is translated into in common speech. And quotes bring us, of course, to citations. And citations are really important. They tell us, the reader, where you got your information and where we can go and look and take and understand that information. So you want to cite when quoting. Absolutely necessary. If there is, a, if you are including quotation marks, there better be a citation somewhere close to that to that point. You want to cite when paraphrasing, and this is where students get mixed up. If you are summarizing ideas, major ideas and points and, and pieces of somebody else's argument or story or things like that, there should be a citation because the act of paraphrasing is taking other people's information and reconfiguring it. And I, as the reader, want to know, well, how did you get that idea from where in the place that you're citing? So you need a citation even when you're paraphrasing. And so this is where students get mixed up the most, is they'll, they'll often be really good at citing when quoting, but when it comes to paraphrasing, they don't do it. Uh, and it's actually even more important to cite when paraphrasing because you are remixing the author's words. And that, that means, as a reader, I want to make sure that you're authentically representing what the author has said, or maybe I want to see what else the author has to say about that subject matter. And typically that citation goes at the end of the sentence and it should be in with uh, parentheses and it should be before the period. Uh, sometimes students will put the, the quote, they'll put the citation after the period and that's actually incorrect. It should be in the same sentence and that, that sentence ends with the period. It should be in the same sentence as the information that's, that is being cited. Um, and then, so that you put a, a brief citation in, and then the full citation goes, of course, in your works cited, uh, which should be at the end of your paper. And then again, you know, talking about using quotes, don't use quotes when just air quoting. Um, this is something we do when we're talking to people. We'll use, you know, phony air quotes. We'll put our hands in the air and, and kind of air quote something. And in a formal paper, you don't want to do this. If there's quotes, the indication is that you are quoting something and therefore have to cite it. So be careful about, you know, using quoting ironically in a paper. All right, and then the other big thing that students really need to tend to work on is in these assignments, you should always, always, always be connecting your discussion, your analysis, your research to course readings, to uh, any academic material that we cover in the course. So typically it should be the content, it should be the readings, not just the lectures. In fact, you should always give precedence to the readings over the lectures. Now how do you connect those? You can connect the content, right? So what I'm writing about is similar in content to this. 
the argument. The way that what I'm talking about is similar to this other reading is that we both take this type of argument or we both use this type of evidence. The approach. Uh, we both are approaching this from a certain theoretical viewpoint or we are approaching it from, you know, we're trying to construct, you know, the, this type of argument. And then, you know, this paper or is, is identifying or touching upon those big ideas or major themes that we also see in this writing or in that writing. But it's always important to bring it back to the course readings and identify exactly what it is that you are doing in relation to what's going on in the course. That's, that's how you illustrate some of your learning, some of your ability to process and synthesize the materials. So what other tips uh, do you find useful? So I've laid out a bunch here, but what other tips do you have? Um, by all means, post them in the open forum or actually post them on this YouTube uh, on, in the comments area. But I would love to hear what are some of the other great tips that people use to improve their writing, to make sure that they're spot on to uh, complete different assignments. All right, that's all for now. Thank you very much.